Hey nerds, I'm talking about Star Trek Picard episode 307 Dominion. I'm going to review it and then get into a spoiler breakdown of the episode starting now. Welcome to the Nerd Social Show, Nathan. So I'm coming to you solo again this week. If you've been following the reviews, we got some advanced screeners from Paramount, the first six episodes, and we didn't get the last two until recently, so we weren't able to coordinate this recording. But Condra and David will join me for the review of episode eight, because we do have that one. All right, so the spoiler-free logline for this episode is, Crippled, cornered, and out of options, Picard stages a gambit to trap Vatic and reveal her true motive, a gamble that puts the Titan and the crosshairs and forces Picard and Beverly to question every moral code they've ever held. So this is written by Deborah Campier and directed by Jay Mags. So I think this is a really good episode. I have some qualms with some things that happen in the second scene in the first act, but besides that ding and some things later on in the episode that probably they expect to hit harder than they actually did, I think this is a really great episode. And the really the reason that this is a really great episode is Vatic, as, as mentioned in the log line of this episode. She's the MVP of the episode, followed after that by Brett Spiner. And I won't get into who he's playing in this episode because if you saw the previous episode, he's inhabiting many characters. So uh, Amanda Plummer and Brett Spiner in this episode have been, brings this episode up quite a bit. Of course, uh, Patrick Stewart is also doing a great job here in Gates of Vatic as well as Beverly Crusher is also doing an exceptional job in this episode. Trying to dance around the specifics here. Yeah, it's a really good episode. We get another really great monologue from one of these actors showing what they can do. So if you watched our previous review, the link is up there. One of the other reasons I really like this episode is it fixes one of the things I really complained about in the previous episode. And I'll talk about the specifics of that in the breakdown. But yeah, I'm glad that was resolved or that was explained in this episode or explained in a way that it wasn't as closed as presented in the previous episode. All right. So all in all, I think in our rating system, I would give this a movie marathon, which is a nine on our scale. So I can't give it the top marks because I, like I said, I dinged it a little bit for something that's happening in the beginning of the episode that that's a little bit annoying to me. But I even forgot to mention that there's a surprise cameo that was a very, very pleasant at the very beginning of this episode as well. But real, like I said, Amanda Plummer's like hitting it out of park in this episode in this some really good writing for the most part in this episode so I really enjoyed it all right so I can't really talk about the episode anymore without uh, actually talking about the specifics so if you're enjoying the review please like share and subscribe it really helps our channel out we really appreciate it um and with that spoilers ahead <laughs> So I have screenshots from this episode and we start this episode in space with Seven on the bridge here talking to our guest for the week, which is Tuvok or Captain Tuvok. And for fans of Voyager, this is Tuvok probably took the longest time to get to the captain's chair. But as, if you remember from that old episode of Voyager, he used to be under Sulo's command in the TOS era. So she thinks she's talking to Tuvok here and they're, of course, analyzing his voice to make sure that he actually is who he says he is. It sounds like it's going well because as she says something about Kalto. And if you remember from the old episodes of Voyager, they used to play Kalto together. I mean, she thinks that he is who he says he is when he responds with the Kalto thing here. But she continues to curry him and figures out that he's deceiving her because she wants him to meet her at Alkian 7, which apparently there were some anti Kalinar demonstrations. And if you remember from the movies, Kalinar is the Vulcan ritual to purge emotions. And also, Tuvok stabilized her neural patterns on Voyager. So her saying that she's stabilize her neural patterns there was also another tell that Tuvok would know but she also was concerned about Tuvok because the information that this changeling has she could he could only have gotten from Tuvok so he's really concerned about him one of the things that the changeling says is all I can tell you is when we are done with him we are done with all of you death will come as a relief and then the admiral asks about Will and of course he says that he's dead just like all of you so they're on their own and, and that's how the episode starts with a teaser all right so act one of this episode basically doing a debrief and I guess Warp is out of this episode because he's looking for Riker as he said he was going to do at the end of the last episode Picard asks Jordy about Worf who says that there's no mention of Will in custody. And then in this conversation, Beverly mentions that she's wearing the morality of something, specifically targeting the changelings. And she's concerned that it would be tantamount to genocide. And Picard is like, we need to just cross that bridge when we get to it and see if there's actually anything to weigh if you find something. And then they suggest that the changelings want to get Jack's DNA to have a replica of Picard for Frontier Day. Of course, to get more information, they want to go to Lore. This is the scene that I had a bit of trouble 
trouble with it. It's just reiterating everything that we heard at the end of the last episode. And I know there was a lot of stuff in the last episode, so maybe they don't, I don't know, they don't trust their audience. But Picard was in the same room when all this stuff was told to us, the audience, at the end of the last episode. Everything that Jory's telling him about the two personalities, Lore and Data, we do get information that B4 and Soong are just files. There's a separation of Lore and Data because Soong thought that Lore would consume Data. But besides that, a lot of this information is the same. What saves this scene is Brett Spider's performance here as Lord. Calling Picard old here. And Alondra pointing out, has he always been so arch? That what he says to her, was, I guess it's lampshading a bit. The fact that Lore has always been a bit over the top. But his response, when you're constantly subjected to these self-righteous self proclaimed heroes spewing their morality as F vomit was somehow virtuous, then sometimes, my dear, a little bend, a little arch, a little antagonizing flair is required. Of course, I did not perform that nearly as well as Brent Spider. So anyway, Jordy surmises that perhaps soon thought that he could integrate the two personalities and become what Data always wanted, human, because Picard asked why would he do this. The other thing that we got out of the scene is that Data knows that there was an indication that the anomaly inside of Picard might not have been aromatic syndrome, might have been something else. And this is pointing to one of the issues that I had with the previous episode being Jack that has been resolved in this episode, which is another reason why I like this episode so much. And Data also asks for help in this scene as well. And Picard mentions that he asked to die several years ago so he could die in peace. So he's conflicted by this. So the next scene we have Vatic on the strike being threatened by what the credits call the face. We still don't know who this person is and you need me to know who this person is soon because he's more annoying than interesting at this point and seems to have the ability to boil her remotely, which is interesting, but we need some keys to this mystery soon, I hope. All right, so next we get this, again, more confirmation that Jack isn't just being affected by aeronautics syndrome because he can hear Sydney's voice here when he tries to hit on her and tell, ask her about her quarters, which is not subtle at all, as she says in her head. And then she says something about touching her hand, and she, he actually touches her hand, and she's like, why did you do that? So he starts to see things again, yet again. And is, again, the thing that I pointed out in the previous review about the red eyes, that is showing up again. So not aromatic syndrome, something else is going on here. All right, so we get to the bridge and we find that a compromised code has been sent and it's being sent from the frequency of the strike. So compromised code, as I explained to Jack, is a, it's a code that a captain in the stress can give that will ping his designated starship and will give the location of the ship, but it lets us know that he's captured or compromised. So that's actually a pretty cool tidbit there that they added to the lore and they realize that it's coming from the strike. So Vedic has will. In this conversation, in the next scene, the conversation Jack and Picard is interesting for a couple reasons here. The thing that Jack says about wanting to give himself up for Will because he has a wife and a daughter, and he, he says, you have any idea what it's like knowing that people have died, are dying, will die for what? For me, it's not worth it. I, I'm not worth it. Also mentions here that he still feels like something's wrong with him. The other shoe hasn't really dropped, but we see a bit more of the weirdness with him later on in this episode. But at the end of the scene, Picard seems to have a plan to draw Vatic out as a alluded to in the spoiler free log line. So in the second act here, Vatic is on the bridge of her ship and she thinks that she has the Titan, but her second in command, her lieutenant here, thinks that it's a trap, but she's under pressure to show results to the face. So she is going to go in. The other thing that I found interesting here is that she said not to use the transporters, which is another thing, if you remember two episodes ago, that Rose said that she didn't want to use the transporters. They're sending over a shuttle of security officers. Shuttle? Something wrong with their transporters? Apparently the security officer is insisting on a shuttle. I, I don't even trust the transporters on the ship. There have been fleet-wide issues for months. So there's something going on with the transporters. If you remember a couple episodes back, Jack, when he saw people transporting, he saw those red vines as well. So there's something going on with the transporters. And I don't know if the face and his people can get to her when they transport, don't know. But anyway, they take a shuttle to the ship and they encounter Jack in the hallway here. And she says to him that, I just want to take you to a better place. And he's like, how does that mean? So this whole sequence is just them trying to trap Vatic. There's not much dialogue here, just running around and they get her trapped and they are forced into a bit of a trap themselves while trapping her underlings. Sydney and Jack here. So then Jory tries to transport them out and they are locked out of the system by Lore. So as you might have expected, he's an agent of chaos and he wants to throw a wrench into their plan. All right, act three now. This is the best act of the episode. This is rarely where Vatic gets to shine, where Amanda Plata gets to shine. She calls Beverly's bluff when Beverly tries to bluster about taking an oath not to do any harm, but she's seriously reconsidering it. Back. So they're the good cop, bad cop, basically. So she's bored, <laughs> just funny. 
<laughs> Man Plumber's great in this episode. So the couple tidbits here, Beverly says that we know all about your evolved physiology. And Fadik says, what about your son? Do you know all about his physiology? Again, another interesting tidbit there that is not really explored in this episode. And Vadik also lets them know that Jack isn't for her. He also mentions that, that we could bond over that because he never was for you either. So again, more mysteries here about who the face is and how he's connected to Jack. The really good meat of this episode is her talking about why she wants her vengeance. She says that don't compare atrocities committed by your side to the warfare executed by mine. She says that they were barely out of the gates of war and the Federation turned to genocide. And Picard says that they gave them a cure. Baddock says, it's very cute, that's what your history books say, but one of their own had to take the cure. And of course, he's, she's talking about Odo. Really, what happened was that Dr. Bashir got the cure from Sloane and then gave it to Odo, and then Odo gave it to the Link. So she's missing a couple points there, but she is correct in that they voted not to give them the cure. So again, she She's justified here in her, in her outrage of the moral ambiguity and not even moral ambiguity. The Starfleet was going to, without the intervention of the DS9 crew, be okay with genocide. So she has some valid points here. So this is, of course, intercut with Sydney and uh, Jack being st stuck and the stuff going on with Lore and also the stuff going on with Jack with his, his powers here. So this is the real meat of Vadik's monologue, telling about how she was tortured, subjected to all kinds of experiments on Daystrom Station, her and her brother and nine of them on a shelf by her torturer, injected, slice cut, boiled, and basically tortured to become the ultimate weapons to drop into any civilization and destabilize them. She also mentions that she can pass on her ability. So the experiments created her evolution. She can mimic better than previous changelings because of section 31, but she also, and she also says that she can pass this on to other changelings, but they have to accept a shorter life and eternal pain for the ability to fool those who took everything. The other thing that she mentions here is how remarkable it is that enlightened species can ignore each other's pain and Jasper Card, do you think she'd have kept your son from you if she could have felt your loss? Yeah, so at some point, I hope they address Section 31 and how immoral it is for them to continue to function. I feel like later on this season, they mentioned already the virus, which they knew about, and now there's this torture and, and this experimentation. So they need to use whatever clout they have to shut down Section 31, in my estimation. Anyway, she does taunt Beverly here and says, are you ready to lose another son? So at the beginning of Act 4, we have Jordy pleading with Lore, or trying to plead with Data to get have Data come out and help them. And then there's the moral quandary that we got a hint of in the spoiler free logline. They are talking about executing her, and she's a prisoner. So it'd be just more moral, not just gray, just black, similar to what Section 31 did. They, they have her as a prisoner. Picard says that she decided to take the face of her tormentor to remind herself of her hate. She's an executioner for her cause. And then we have the conversation between Jordy and Data. I, I feel like this conversation should have hit harder than it actually did for me. It was a good conversation. Some of the things he says to him, and I can't fault the performance by LeVar Burton. Just, I feel like similar to the conversation that Will Wiker has earlier in the season to Picard about his loss of his son, it doesn't hit all the right notes for me. It's fine. It's serviceable but I think it, it would have been better if they took another run at it. So, but it was okay. Him basically expressing the pain that he felt when he lost it and the fact that he made him a better man. So yeah, this is actually the part where they are talking about killing prisoner and they care. And then we switch back to the conversation with Jordy or the attempt for Jordy to get through to Data, which is falling on Lore's deaf ears. This is where Beverly says that she's losing her compass. And Picard says, are we so fundamentally changed that we're willing to compromise everything that we believed in? And Lore drops his force field and says the enemy of my enemy, you know the rest. And Vatic escapes the sickbay and her people escape. And again, this is another indication of what Jack might be, but it's not clear what he is. He can hear Sydney and Sydney can talk to him, but he also seems to be able to control Sydney. He helps her defeat this changeling by calling the moves, but also seemingly like controlling her as well. So at this point, Beta takes control and Sydney is rightfully afraid of him because it's very weird, but Vatic is making her way to the bridge. The ever re revelation in this episode, which is hinted at earlier on in the episode, is that Beverly found that the experiment, Project Prometheus, that Vatic spoke about earlier on in the episode, they used Felonium 847 as a stabilizer 
utilizing the agent, which has a 100 year half-life, so they can use that to track the changelings. So Shaw is trying to keep Vatic from the bridge and he does not succeed. Seven is distracted by Shaw's body and the bridge is taken and someone is killed there. One of the crew members is killed there. And then Vatic takes the bridge and she gives a yet another really great speech here. She asks to open up a channel to the ship and she says that you've proven yourselves worthy, I suppose, not without guile, but being fluid means knowing what the river knows. There are many ways to the same sea. So they're always going to end up where, they're, where they ended up. The end of the episode is basically her saying to Jack, time you learned who you really are. So hopefully in the next episode, we can find out who Jack really is and what's going on with him because it's not aromatic syndrome. And that's where the episode ends. So all right, that's what I think, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please comment down below, like, share, and subscribe, and check out our previous review or check out one of our reviews of The Mandalorian. All right, guys. Bye.